Hello and welcome. A discussion on transformations of graphs. Um, this is a topic that I have seen several times uh, on, on various forums and people seem to be a bit confused as to what is going on, the order of transformations, etc, etc, etc. So I'm going to try to shed a little bit of light. I haven't prepared very well for this particular lecture, um, so do apologize for this. So let's have a look a little bit at some of uh, transformations and uh, see what we make of them. So first of all, let's look at the graph of uh, two times the sine of x plus 1. So let's put y is equal to that. Okay, what do you make of this? I mean, in, first of all, if you write it in f notation, where f of x, of course, it signifies the sine of x, which is a well-known function. This graph, of course, is well-known. What does this look like? What kind of transformations are involved? Um, this we can think of it. When, the, the, when we actually are operating on the function, so the reason I'm using the word operating is because I can write this as two. The sine of x, of course, f of x plus one. All I'm actually saying in there is double your function and then add one to it. Um, so if you wanted to describe this particular transformation, you could, of course, say I'm going to, this represents a vertical stretch by scale factor of two, followed by a translation upwards or parallel to the y-axis, if you want, by one unit. Can you do it in another way? So if you if you, if you you want, the answer is yes, but it would be totally perverse. For example, one could actually write this both ways. Let me actually write it next to each of them. That's in terms of the graph that we just mentioned. We can write it as y is equal to. In other words, can we do the translation first? Of course we can, but it's actually quite stupid. Uh, we can write it as sine of x plus a half, which, of course, if I have to write in F notation now, it's going to be, of course, two bracket F of X plus a half. OK, how do I describe this particular transformation? First of all, is it the same transformation? It's exactly the same. But at the moment, the order has been reversed as I'm writing it in there. So first of all, I'm translating the graph of F of X by half a unit upwards in the Y direction, if you want, and then take the resulting graph and stretch it vertically by scale factor of Two. It's exactly the same transformation. This particular, to, to be thinking along those lines, really, as, I'm, I'm really um, sorry that I even mentioned, it's not natural, it's fairly stupid to even think about describing the transformation this uh, way. It's not natural. Okay, so these are transformations which are actually operations. Operations means take your function and you just follow logical operations, such as I'm adding one to the function, okay? Or I'm multiplying the function by two, and so on. These are operations, but the transformations really, they're not most of the time operations. They are replacements. They mean a very, very different thing. And in fact, if I, if I have enough time today, I might actually expand and try to explain a little bit more about transformations in general, which will go towards enrichment. Let's look at this particular um, uh, transformation. I want to write in terms of um, F notation as well as in terms of a graph. So let's look at Y is the square root of 2X minus 1. And of course, let's say the base graph, the graph that we know what it looks like, the graph of F of X is the square root of X. We ought to know that this particular graph looks something like this. Okay, so it starts from the origin. There's nothing in any other quadrant and it's not asymptotic it doesn't flatten out it just grows but grows, grows very slowly okay so the question now is um first of all in f notation the very same graph that is f of 2x minus 1. now should you be seeing that as 2 times x minus 1 the answer is absolutely not because it isn't and it's not an operation. This is a replacement. You have to be very careful how you see this particular bit. Okay, uh, I'll try to explain the way I teach and the way I see it, all right? Um, first of all, you can replace, let's write it here, replace x with something else x, with something else x, something else X, I'm going to put that in speech marks, so long as 
it is a well established slash understood understood transformation okay i'll explain to you what i mean by that i can replace an x okay for 2x is that uh, well understood and well established yes if i replace x for 2x that represents a horizontal stretch by scale factor of a half can i replace x by 1 minus 2x careful what i'm going to answer you can of course you can replace anything by anything but in terms of a well understood simple transformation this is not understood or easy to explain it's a combination of transformations and you may not replace x for 1 minus 2x but can i replace for example x for x plus 3 of course you can what else can we do can we replace x for minus x yes we can can we replace x for the square root of x i'm opening a can of worms here now the answer is of course you can and it's a well understood transformation but is not taught at the basic a level maths level and therefore you will not be asked actually but those who are in enrichment and they're reading maths for the for the all for themselves they might do a little bit of research and try to understand what the replacing x for the square root of x does the same way we can replace x for x squared it does something very very specific it has some specific properties it's a transformation a well understood well established transformation but again is not being taught at a level and therefore we'll avoid those ones for the time being okay and we're going to concentrate okay on established things like replacing x for something like 2x 3x half x or x for x plus 3 x minus 3 x plus 7 or replacing x for the negative of x replacing i must say you must avoid the word becomes there is no becomes band there is no um, goes to band you must not use this terminology replace x for something else x which is well understood and well established if you can't do it then you're doing something wrong or you're going about it the wrong way or maybe it's a little bit hard and you can't see it so let me explain now what order of transformations are represented in this particular sequence and which is a sensible order because again you can do it in any order but you have to be very careful okay i'm going to start of course with y is the square root of x and i want to eventually end up with this particular graph this particular expression the square root of x does not become that not allowed the square root of x does not go to that not allowed however i can replace the x so i'm replacing this x in here with an x minus one is that allowed of course it's allowed and what does it do it's well understood it will translate the graph one unit to the right okay what do i do next i can replace the x that i'm seeing in here now with 2x so i'm replacing this x for 2x is that a well understood transformation yes it, it is what does it do it it's a horizontal stretch by scale factor of a half in terms of transformations if that is your f of x this is your f of x minus one and then if we call this we reset basically that the transformation clock we go and say okay this is now a g of x so g of x is that then i'm replaced the x for 2x so that's your g of 2 of x okay so this i can actually describe it in terms of transformations as a horizontal trans sorry a translation i'm going to use very informal vocabulary a horizontal translation by one unit to the right followed by a horizontal stretch by scale factor of a half can i do it the other way around the answer is yes but it's not natural and you might make a mistake so can i do the translation 
second and the stretch first. Yes, let's have a look how we're going to do that. I'm going to replace the x now with a stretch. So I'm replacing x for 2x. That's okay. But now, in order to get from this graph to this graph, I cannot just add the minus 1. cannot be done. There's no adding or subtracting minus 1. It doesn't become, it doesn't go to. I have to replace my x, just the x. And how will I replace my x? I'm going to replace the x. And in order to become that, sorry, I'm using the word become. Band, I'm going to give myself a detention. In order to match what this particular expression, I'm going to replace the x for x minus a half. This, in fact, is exactly the same as that. So if I do the order of operations in reverse, that represents a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of a half, followed by a translation by half a unit to the right. Okay, these are equivalent. This is the natural one to do. Replace x for x minus 1 and then replace x for 2x. But of course, you can actually do it in reverse. I'm going to look a little bit at some other more complicated um, transformations just to actually see the order of doing things and uh, try to, to help a little bit with all of this. I hope I'm not complicating things. Um, I'm not, um, sometimes I'm, I'm a terrible teacher when it teaches sort of like uh, people that are struggling with maths. I tend to teach and reach when most of my students tend to be high flyers. So I have difficulty sometimes to understand um, the, the genuine difficulties that some, some of us might have. So let's have a look at this example and I hope uh, I make sense in what I'm going to do. I'm going to describe the transformations that match the graph oops, of log of x, y is equal to the log of x, that gets mapped onto the graph of y is the log of the mod of 2x plus 4. Okay, I need to break my transformations. They're all in the argument of the log. They are replacements and they have to be done in a very specific order in order for that to work. Okay, so let's think about how we're going to do something like that. And perhaps I'll sketch the graph. Why not? Okay, I'm going to wrap this off. Um, so we did talk enough about all of this. So let's look what transformations are actually taking place. Uh, I'm going to start with a graph of the log of x, which we all to know that it looks something like that. These are little baby pictures. That's the graph of the log of x, asymptotic on the y-axis, crosses up to 1 on the x-axis. What can I do? I need to somehow bring this graph to map onto this graph. I've got a mod in there on the argument. I've got 2x plus 4. Okay, let's say I replace x here with an x plus 4. Is that a valid transformation? Yes, it does. It is, sorry. And of course, this will translate my graph by 4 units to the left. Then how can I go closer to my target? Well, I can replace my x for 2x. That's another valid transformation. Replace x for 2x. So what does that do? That's the uh, the replacing x for 2x is basically your f of 2x. So that's a horizontal stretch by scale factor of a half. So I've got to this graph. Now the question is how on earth I'm going to put these moduli signs there. I can actually mod the whole graph. That's an operation. It's not on the argument. But now I cannot just say the log of x like some of us do. The log of x becomes 2x plus 4. I hate it. It does not become... If you use the word become, it can become anything you want. It can become Henry VIII. Okay, there's a problem with what we've just done. Um, we cannot all of a sudden get these moduli signs in the right place. We have to think again from the beginning and perhaps try a different order. Okay, uh, those who have done modulus <coughs> function, this, you should know that there is a transformation. Replace x for the mod of x. It's normally written f of mod of x. That says replace x for mod of x. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this x for the mod of x. Valid transformation. I'm going to sketch what this graph looks like without making a reference as to why it looks like that. If you don't know, please look up modula, modulus and you'll see why. Okay, it looks like this. So this graph now 
create we, we're creating an extra branch is symmetrical about the y-axis one and minus one so that's the graph of the log of mod x now what i'm going to do next now i can follow the transformations exactly how i've done them before because the moduli signs have gone into the right place now now i'm going to replace the sensible thing to do is to replace x for x plus four first okay replacing this for this translates the graph four units to the left so this now this graph now will look actually i'm going to draw the graph first and i'm going to put the axis afterwards so first of all i'm going to have the asymptote is going to move at x is equal to minus four so that's an asymptote there's my graph this will go, of course, four units to the left. So that is going to be now at negative three and at negative five. And my, of course, my y-axis will be somewhere here. So, so far I have the log of mod x plus four. And lastly, I'm going to replace, I've got no room here. So maybe I will just squeeze it up here. So I do apologize. This uh, mini board is, is tiny. Um, I'm going to replace the x for two x. So when I replace x for 2x, that is a horizontal stretch by scale factor of a half. So it will have all the x coordinates. In fact, I won't even draw it. Uh, sorry, I will write obviously the transformation that just took place, but I will use this graph actually to do it. All it's going to happen, all the x coordinates will half. So this will now go to minus 2. That will become minus 5 over 2. That will go minus 3 over 2. And that will be, that'll be done. So this particular graph, the transformations involved in there are um, replace x for mod x, replace now your x for x plus 4, and then finally replace your x for 2x. You can actually swap the last two steps, not natural. Um, you can actually do the following, replace x for mod x. You can replace now x for 2x, but now you can't just put plus 4. You cannot add four. You have to replace your x again. And in order to get to this particular expression, you need to replace it for x plus two. And that, of course, will reverse the last two transformations. The first one has to be go first. Otherwise, it's not possible to actually do that. OK, we're going to go to one more example, perhaps to uh, discuss this very, very quickly. Um, I don't know, I'm actually um, in the mood to get a lengthier discussion, just show you a few other things with the uh, transformations. Uh, let's look at uh, another graph. I'm going to speed it up now. Y is 1 over X, and we're going to map it into Y is 1 over 4 minus X. So we need a sensible order to get from here to there. Okay, we're going to take the 1 over X. Somehow we need to create something which looks like that. My sensible thing to do is to replace x for x plus 4. So I'm replacing x for x plus 4, translating the graph for units to the left. Now I've got one more thing, which is to replace the x here for minus x. Okay, that will flip the graph horizontally about the y-axis rather than horizontally. It flips about the y-axis. So this is the order of transformations. Translation, four units to the left, and then followed by reflection about the y-axis. Can you do it the other way around? Of course you can, but you have to be very careful. If you do the reflection first, so first of all, the one over x, I need to replace it for minus x. So I'm not multiplying the x by minus one, replacing it for minus x. I will flip in the y-axis, and then in order to look like this, I need to do another replacement. And the replacement I need to do for this x, in order to become this particular expression, I need to replace it for um, positive x. So that'll give me the minus x, negative 4. That is going to be now minus x plus 4. So if you reverse the operation, you have to reflect in the y-axis and then translate by 4 units to the right. It will give you exactly the same graph. Okay, one more. Let's see if we can actually see the order of transformations for something fairly complicated. We're trying to sketch the graph of, let's say, um, the square root of 1 minus the mod of x. Disgusting. Okay, so uh, 
let's say it's, it's defined this entire domain, maybe sketch it, but uh, okay, where are we gonna start? So they say to us, basically, go and sketch this thing uh, in the largest possible domain. So of course, we know what the square root of X looks like, is something like that. And I'm gonna have to think about the order of transformations of uh, what I could possibly do with something like this. Um, let's start with the square root of X. It's there, it looks something like this. And I have a modulus on the X. Um, can I put the modulus, first of all, let's say I'm going to replace, okay? So I'm going to replace X for mod X. So I'm going to do it like this. No problem, valid transformation. I'm not gonna sketch the graph just in case this leads to a dead end. And then I'm sketching graph, which of course I have to rub off. Um, what can I do next? Can I put this minus now here? The answer is no, I can replace an X, but if I replace an X, I cannot possibly end up with a minus in there. Therefore, I've got a problem and this transformation is not the right thing to do in, in terms of order in order to get to, to my desired result. So let's try something else. Let's try to replace the X first of all for a minus X. So I'm replacing X for minus X. Okay, what can I do next? Um, somehow I need to create, let's say first of all, perhaps something which looks like that. Can I just add a one in there? The answer is no, I can't. So what can I do instead? Let's replace again. We have the minus there. And let's replace this X that I'm seeing in there for X that will give me the minus that I've got in there, minus one. So it's gonna become a positive one. So what does this do? First of all, that would have flipped me on the Y axis. And this bit here, replacing X for X minus one would have translated me one unit to the right. So let's just draw it first of all. What have we got so far? We got a one minus X under the square root. Okay, how about this? The answer now, I can do it because I can replace my X for the mod of X. It's a valid, well-established operation. So replacing that for the mod of X is well understood. And in fact, now I can sketch this graph. Let's follow the transformations. First of all, replacing X for minus X, I get flipped in this direction like this. So symmetrically to the other side. Then I'm being translated, replaced X for X minus one, one unit to the right. So I will look something like that. So that's one. I'm not worried about the Y coordinate there where I cut. So this is now the graph of the square root of one minus X. And then I'm going to replace X for the mod of X. This is a specialist transformation. You will see it under modulus only. And if you haven't done it yet, it might not make sense. Okay, so at the moment, I'm gonna have something like this. It's gonna be a cusp in here. And I'm going to have a minus one in there. This is a sharp point, it's not smooth like a quadratic. And of course, in order to find out the coordinates of that point, is zero something quite clearly. When I put zero in there, that's one minus zero, which is one. The positive square root of one is of course one. And that is the graph that I've just sketched in there. I just wanna say something a, a little bit more about transformations. This is the, that's all I wanted to actually say. I'm trying to shed a bit of light into order of transformations and what is going on. And it's going wrong with, with a lot of people. A lot of people don't quite understand what's going on with these kind of things. Um, and I just wanna shed a bit of light because these transformations here, uh, y is equal to, I'm gonna put some examples. Uh, let's say f of x plus one. The transformation y is equal, as an example, three f of x. The transformation y is equal minus f of x. And I'm gonna put the cousins. And the cousins are, of course, let's say, uh, replacing x for x plus one replacing x for 3x and replacing x for minus x. These are called them proper. They are proper transformations. All transformations are in fact replacements. These things don't really exist. Although we, we manufactured them 
purely because in, in a lot of work, the equations of graphs are given in the form y is equal to f of x. So we want some kind of shortcuts when we have to do transformations and the equations in this form. All transformations are replacements. Let me explain to you something and let me just uh, uh, just try to excite your, your, your interest by saying the following. This is a, a, a curve which perhaps uh, most of us wouldn't know what, is, what it is. It's uh, the, the volume of the Carters. This is this equation. X cubed plus Y cubed is 6XY. It could be just anything there. And the, the, what this thing looks like is uh, something um, we've got... Um, some kind of like egg at the origin and it kind of like loops on itself. I've drawn it very, very badly, but it's something like this, okay? And now we're trying to ask ourselves, okay, you know what? I'd like to translate this graph, let's say two units upwards. How on earth I'm going to do that is the next question. So you're thinking, okay, I'm going to translate it two units upwards, so f of x plus two. What do you mean two times f of x plus two? I don't even have, a, you just say to me, I'm gonna make y the subject onto this. In order to translate this by two units upwards, you must be out of your mind. No, no, no way, I'm not doing it. Okay, how will I translate this graph two units up in y? I will replace my y. In order to go up, it needs to be replaced by y minus two. So if you look at the equation and take this, replace it for y minus two, or cubed is equal to six x bracket y minus two. You can simplify if you want, but you can leave it like that. This particular curve will move up by two units. This is what is happening. This is what you need to be doing for everything. So if I go back to these operations and look at them carefully and say, let's put an example. Y is x squared plus one. Really, the equation of this curve can be written if I wanted as y minus 1 is equal to x squared. Okay? So if you look at what happens to the curve y is equal to x squared, I replaced the y for y minus 1. The graph will move up by one unit. The same way, if you have, let's say, I'll use quadratics because we are familiar with it and we kind of feel for it. If you had the graph of 3x squared, okay? So we want to see how does that relate to x squared graph, which of course we know what it looks like. If I rewrite this as a third y is equal to x squared, I'm going to take this graph and replace my y by third y. It will stretch vertically by scale factor of 3. It's exactly what we're doing in X, but we're doing it in Y. And it's the same thing. You see this minus, we, we see it in there. But in reality, in the graph of Y is equal to something, we're just writing on the side. But in, in reality, we're replacing the Y for minus Y. Any curve, whatever equation it has, implicit or nice in the form Y is equal to F of X, okay, it's all about replacements. Although I'm not saying at any time, Please ignore this, these are just rubbish, or you shouldn't really be using them. Of course you should be using them. But try to understand a little bit deeper about what is going on and what, I'm, I'm keep saying replacement, replacement, replacement. That is what is really taking place. And the same, of course, if you have an equation now that is just a, a, implicit, I don't know, x plus y is equal to 3. Well, if you replace now x for x squared, there is a valid operation. I did mention in the beginning. Of course, you, we don't know at this stage what it does. Then we, are, we can actually do things with it. Or we can replace maybe the y in this particular equation. Okay. By the square root of y. Then that does a very specific thing. These are kind of like more advanced transformations. Of course, they're not being taught at A level. I hope I made sense. Um, I went a little bit off the subject. And I hope, most importantly, I didn't confuse people. Okay, I'm going to stop because it went far too long. I'm signing out. I'll see you very soon.